हेलो एवरीवन इन दिस वीडियो द टॉपिक इज फाइल एलोकेशन मेथड्स एंड दिस इज द फोर्थ लेक्चर ऑन फाइल सिस्टम मैनेजमेंट ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो फाइल एलोकेशन मेथड मींस एलोकेटिंग स्पेस टू द फाइल सो दैट द डिस्क स्पेस इज यूटिलाइज इन एन एफिशिएंट मैनर नाउ देयर आर सर्टेन फैक्टर्स दैट नीड्स टू बी कंसिडर बिफोर एलोकेटिंग स्पेस टू द फाइल एंड दो फैक्टर्स आर द फर्स्ट फैक्टर इज प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड ऑफ द प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड ऑफ सिक्वेंशियल एक्सेस रेंडम एक्सेस टू द फाइल सो इट इज एक्चुअली द प्रोसेसिंग स्पीड इन बोथ सिक्वेंशियल एक्सेस एज वेल एज रेंडम एक्सेस नाउ इट मीन्स सपोज इफ आई एम एलोकेटिंग ए स्पेस टू ए फाइल and after that allocation my sequential or random access is too slow then that allocation is considered to be inefficient the second factor is ability to make use of multi sector and multi track transfer the second factor is ability to use multi sector and multi track transfer now whatever uh, space that you are allocating after allocation that files needs to be uh, that file should be capable of using the concept of multi sector and multi track transfer that is your third uh, second factor that you need to consider the third factor is disk space utilization disk space utilization it means file needs to be allocated such that maximum number of files can be stored in a disk so for example if i have a disk size in a disk i have a block size of suppose k 500k and one block of say 400k and i have a file of 390k and i have to allocate that file to the disk now there are two blocks either i can choose 500k or i can choose 400k now if i choose 500k that means i am wasting 110k of memory and if i am choosing 400k then i am wasting only 10k of memory so disk space utilization says choose the block in which the disk space is better utilized or efficiently utilized so this is your third factor and the fourth factor is main memory requirement now main memory is always a constraint in any operating system we have limited main memory so file allocation should be such that main memory requirement is least or less so these are some of the factors that you need to consider that an operating system should consider before allocating a space to the file now there are different kinds of allocation methods and we have we will see one each of those methods one by one in this video let's start with the contiguous allocation in contiguous allocation each file occupies a set of contiguous addresses on disk so suppose if the disk is like this we have a disk and we have certain blocks Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Suppose we have a disk like this with nine blocks, numbering from zero to eight, and and we have a file directory which is used to map that which file is stored at which. location there is a directory with the file name file name and the starting block 
width of the file and the length of the file. Suppose we have A, start is 0 and length is 2. And also we have B, start is 3 and length is also 3. So it says each file occupies a set of contiguous address on disk. It means that if file A needs to be stored in this disk with starting as 0, so file A will occupy this 0 and goes up to 2 length of contiguous blocks. So the location of file A is like this. This is your file A with starting at 0 and going up to length which is 2. So first block and second block. Similarly, B starting from 3 and goes up to 3 lengths. So B will be stored in a contiguous location like this. So this is how contiguous allocation works. In this, the linear ordering is used as you can see. In the location of a file is determined by the disk address of the first block like this 0 and its length as we have already seen. Both sequential and direct random access are supported. Now let's see how sequential and random access are supported. For sequential access, file system remembers the disk address of the last block and when required, reads the next block. Clear? So for sequential access, the file system just read, remembers the last block that it has read and starts from reading the next block. But for random access, for random access, let's say the file starts at block B and it needs to access ith record in that block or in that file. So for random access, the address or location will be B plus I. For example, let's say a user wants to access second record of file B. So what it will be? 3 plus second record that is 0, 1. First record, second record. That is 4. So it will directly access this particular record. So second record I have used 1 because I am using the index from 0. Clear? So that is how random access is also supported in the contiguous allocation. But there are certain disadvantages of contiguous allocation. The first disadvantage is finding finding space for new file. Finding space for new file is very difficult in contiguous allocation methods because you have to keep track of the free blocks. Let's say after allocating A and B this second block is free. So we need to keep track how many blocks, where it is stored and when it is free. Then the second disadvantage is external fragmentation. This is the biggest disadvantage of contiguous allocation. External fragmentation. One variation of contiguous uh, memory allocation technique is dynamic storage allocation and as we have already seen in the previous videos there are three different types of techniques first is first fit best fit and worst fit so what is the meaning of first fit is allocate the hole that is allocate the first hole that is big enough allocate first hole that is big enough Now for example, let's say I have two different holes, one of size 400k and another is of size 300k and I have a file of 290k to allocate. Then according to first fit, it should be allocated to the first hole that is big enough and the first hole which is big enough for this file is 400k. 
so in this according to first fit this 290k file will get allocated in this area and as you can see 110k is wasted in this so this is your first fit then we have best fit it allocates the it allocates the smallest hole that is big enough for the file now let's consider the same example we have three blocks now let's say one is of 300k another is of 400k and last is of 290k exactly or 298 let us assume and we have a file of 290k to allocate now let's see we have to find the smallest hole which is large enough to hold this particular file and as you can see from this 300k also hold 400k also 298k and out of this three which is the smallest 298k so this file will now gets allocated in this space and in this only 8k is wasted so that is your best fit then we have the worst fit worst fit means allocate the largest hole it says allocates the largest hole now let's consider the same example one is of 300k another is of 400k and then we have 298k and the file is of 290k now as per worst fit we have to allocate the largest hole which is 400k and in this 110k of memory is wasted now if we see each first fit according to first fit this will get allocated to this only 10k is wasted according to best fit this will gets allocated to this only 8k is wasted but all of this algorithms will suffer from external fragmentation so this is uh, the application of this contiguous memory allocation next we have in this topic is linked allocation linked allocation solves all the problems of contiguous allocation in this each file is a link list of disk blocks so it is now not necessary that we have to have a contiguous address for a file to be saved we can have scattered blocks and each block should be linked with the other block and in this there is no external fragmentation but the disadvantage is it can be used only for sequential access of file now this is the biggest disadvantage of linked allocation now let's see one example of how linked allocation works now let us assume that we have a directory like this where we have one file a starting location is 9 and ending is 13 so how this will be stored in our disk with the help of linked allocation is now we know that the starting is 9 so this pointer will be linked with this ninth block of the disk and suppose after 9 the location or the block that is linked is 4 so it will have a pointer like this 4 then from 4 it can be 1 from 1 it can be 6 11 and the last is 13 so 11 will be linked to this 13 and also we will have a po pointer from this end to this 13 so that is how this linked allocation works but the disadvantage is there is no sequential access because if i have to access directly 6 then i need to go with from the starting 
location then only i can access this six next type of allocation technique is indexed allocation it solves the problem of linked allocation and the problem with link allocation is there is no random access but index allocation allows random access in this all the pointers are brought together into one location called the index block and each file has its own index block now let uh, let me explain this with you uh, explain this to you with the help of an example let's suppose there is a directory structure here like this with file a and the index block is 9 so this is your index block and all the pointers of this file are present in this index block so this index block will look like this it will have all the pointers for example say 4 2 3 7 it means that file a is stored at location 4 2 3 and 7 and the information of this storage area is present in this index block so now after this what happens if i have to access this block 2 then what i need to do i need to find the index block go there and from this i can directly access the second block so that is how it solves the issues of linked allocation now from 9 i have a link to 4 so you can join and show this from 9 i have a link 2 then from 9 i have a link 3 and 7 so at these locations file a is stored so this is about the indexed allocation Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more such tutorials. Thank you.